Welcome to this, one of the series of Rite of a Christian Initiation of Adults training sessions offered by Our Lady of the Greenwood for RCIA students and parishioners alike. The subject of this video is the Sacrament of Holy Orders. Resources used for this video are the Journey of Faith series that we hand out to all of the RCIA students, the excellent book written by Joseph Martos, Doors to the Sacred, and the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Remember, when we talk about the word sacramentum, it was an ancient term from the Roman Empire that meant a religious ceremony in a sacred place. The Church transitioned that to the term sacramentals, which really means a sign of a sacred reality, something here on earth that points to heaven, and that's rosaries, medals, etc. From all the sacramentals, the Church raised the seven sacraments above all others. So, the seven sacraments are baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, reconciliation, matrimony, holy orders, which we will discuss here, and anointing of the sick. The sacraments, the seven that are above all, are the symbolic actions given to the church by Christ through which God communicated to the people all that they needed to become holy and attain salvation, both individually and collectively, according to St. Thomas Aquinas. Further, they are signs of the dispensation of grace, as opined by William of Ockham in the 14th century. The Catechism of the Catholic Church states that the sacraments are signs of grace instituted by Christ and entrusted to the Church, by which divine life is dispensed to us. The visible rites by which the sacraments are celebrated signify and make present the graces proper to each sacrament. They bear fruit in those who receive them with the required dispositions. Each sacrament has a matter, form, and effect, and if they're lacking any of that, it's not a valid ritual. For the sacrament of holy orders, the matter is the sign, the laying on of the bishop's hands with a consecratory prayer. The form of the words are the bishop's specific consecratory prayer, asking God for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and his gifts proper to the ministry to which the candidate is being ordained. The effect is the indelible character of a special grace of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of the Holy Spirit to a configuration of Christ as priest, teacher, and pastor, of whom the ordained is made a minister. Now, the origin of the sacrament goes back to the early church, so that as it grew, it required that the apostles assign assistance. As in Acts 6-7, the seven men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, should help minister to the people. These were the people the apostles sent out. And they were the first deacons to serve as ordained ministers. The common priesthood is all baptized that share in the priesthood of Christ as God and calls us to consecrate the world itself to God, the common priesthood of the faithful. We are to both serve others and lead them to Christ. But the ordained priesthood is every community organization needs leaders, including the church. And in Jewish antiquity, God designated the tribe of Levi for liturgical services. The Levites were to act on behalf of men in relation to God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. The ordained priesthood establishes bishops, priests, and deacons as official church leaders to serve in the name and in the person of Christ, the head in the midst of the community. Service to the faithful comes from holy orders which confers a sacred power for the service of the faithful 
the ordained ministers exercise their service for the people of God by teaching, entering into divine worship, pastoral government, governance of their local flock, and the sacrament of holy orders was instituted by Christ. Priesthood became perfected in Christ, who sacrificed himself once for all time. In Matthew 10, Jesus sent out his apostles to preach and baptize. In Mark 6, Jesus gave the apostles the power to heal and forgive sins. At the Last Supper, Jesus gave his apostles the power to celebrate the Eucharist. The Twelve served the Church as the first bishops. The laying on of hands by the bishop with a prayer of consecration is the essential rite in the Sacrament of Holy Orders. The bishop asks God for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and his gifts proper to the ministry to which the candidate is being ordained. Ordination confers the gift of the Holy Spirit that permits the exercise of a sacred power which can come only from Christ himself through his church. Some additional rites include an anointing with chrism, presentation of the ring for the priest and bishop. And exclusively for the bishop, the pectoral cross, the mitre and ring, the crosier and the pallium. Regarding church leaders, Paul said in his letter, 1 Timothy, that we should set an example for those who believe in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. Until I arrive, attend to the reading, exhortation, and teaching. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was conferred on you with the imposition of hands. These were the instructions to the church leaders coming about. In leading the church, as the church grew, those blessed with strong faith and the ability to preach and teach became leaders. This marked the beginning of formal ordination, the sacramental act that integrates a man into the order of bishops, priests, or deacons. Holy Orders is the sacrament through which the mission entrusted by Christ to his apostles continues to be exercised in the church until the end of time. What are the degrees of holy orders? Well, first and foremost, there's the bishop. Traced to Christ's commissioning, the apostles as first leaders of the faithful, he leads a local church as Christ's representative and ensures the unity of his local church with the universal church. Our current archbishop in Indianapolis is the most reverend Charles C. Thomas. The bishop is the principal teacher in the archdiocese, ensures truth of Catholic faith and principles of morality are taught correctly. And he's first among preachers. He speaks in the name of Christ. When he visits a parish or celebrates a sacrament, he represents the universal church. Now our principal bishop is the Pope, the Bishop of Rome. bishop can officiate at all seven sacraments. Now let's talk about the priest. As the church grew, ordained men were added to assist them. The priest is ordained to serve in the name of the bishop and called to preach by word and action. They can celebrate the sacraments of baptism, Eucharist, penance, and anointing of the sick and can be official witnesses at weddings. They may celebrate confirmation with the bishop's permission. Next we have the deacon. The word means servant or helper. The deacon has a threefold service of liturgy, of the word, of the charity to the people of God. The deacon 
can assist at the celebrant at Mass, he can distribute the Eucharist, perform baptisms, officiate at weddings and funeral services, lead prayer, preach, and teach. The focus of the deacon's ministry is charity, caring for the community, especially those in need. There are two types of deacons, the transitional, which is a step before ordination as a priest, and the permanent, single or married man. If permanent deacon is single or his wife dies, he must remain unmarried. So why do the ordained take up celibacy? Well, celibacy is the voluntary state of not marrying and of abstaining from sexual relations. In Matthew 19, we note that Christ spoke of those who remained unmarried for the sake of the kingdom of heaven in a positive way. Also, Paul prays celibacy as a means of focusing on the affairs of the Lord. Celibacy offers a unique opportunity to imitate Jesus. So let's remember, there are seven sacraments, and holy orders is the sacrament we discussed here. Thank you for your interest in this journey in faith of the rite of Christian initiation of adults by Our Lady of the Greenwood. Bless you all.